seriously. Joining me now, Larry Cohen, a Bernie Sanders campaign surrogate and former president of the Communications Workers of America, and Larry Davis, executive vice president at Levick and former White House special counsel. Gentlemen, thank you both for being here. Larry, let me start with you. What do you make of the Super PAC's attempts to link Senator Sanders to the labor leader Corbyn's views, and will anyone pick up on this? Uh, so first I'd say this points to why Bernie says uh, no super PACs and why we're not taking super PAC support at all and why we would support legislation that would get rid of them altogether. Uh, billionaires in politics, big money in politics doesn't work for working people. The Clinton campaign should apologize uh, for those attacks. Correct the record is not on the record. They're way off. And uh, that's why you saw the response today from our campaign. Mm -hmm. Lenny, as you know, super PACs and campaigns can't coordinate. They don't work together. But how should the Clinton campaign approach this? Well, I'd like to speak for myself. I'm here as a friend, long time from law school. I'm not an official. I'm not mm -hmm. a surrogate. I'm speaking for myself. I am very disappointed and strongly disagree in the substance of what Correct the Record has done. Uh, I rely on Correct the Record when they tell me facts about votes, record, what is a fact. The use of the word similar and the other linkage words uh, is completely objectionable to me. I have a great deal of admiration for Bernie Sanders. I'm glad he's running. He's raising the right issues. Hillary Clinton admires him greatly, has not criticized him at all, and the debate that Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton, both progressive Democrats, are having, they agree on the income disparity issues, they agree on cracking down on abuses on Wall Street, and this correct the record, mm -hmm. use of the word but similarity is a terrible mistake, and I hope they retract it. So then, then Lanny, let me follow up, then why shouldn't the campaign uh, call on correct the record? To do what you just said, again, noting that the campaign and the super PAC are not working together. Well, I'd be surprised. I don't speak for the campaign. Right. I would be surprised if Hillary Clinton were happy with this line of similarity, linkage, guilt by association, innuendo. It's exactly the opposite of what I know about Hillary Clinton, her entire public life, she sticks to facts, facts drive her. It's what I never do or try. If I do, I apologize for doing, which is to use adjectives and adverbs about people rather than debating the issues. And to the Bernie Sanders supporter on TV, I hope someday we'll be together supporting a Democrat. I'm glad that Senator Sanders has raised the issue of uh, mm -hmm. repudiating super PACs and that someday perhaps we'll get a constitutional amendment reversing the Supreme Court decision that made corporate money so powerful mm -hmm. in America. Now, Larry, the, the Sanders campaign hints that this move by the super PAC shows Clinton supporters are worried about Sanders' growing popularity. Is the Clinton campaign picking up on it as well? And how do you think they'll react? Well, I, I would agree uh, with what Lanny just said. I'm hoping that uh, they will say this is way out of line. We reject it. Uh, that was Representative Joe Kennedy's heating oil plan, by the way, that Vermont and six other states embraced. And, uh, you know, are they going to attack the Kennedy family as well? I don't think so. So, you know, these kinds of comments are way out of line. And as we again just heard from Lanny, uh, the bigger issue really is why the super PAC money in this campaign at all? It's about time Americans are fed up with big money in politics. Uh, one of the reasons I joined the campaign, uh, and I'm a surrogate in it, is, is Bernie's stand against uh, big money in politics, keep the billionaires out. Uh, that's what we need to do. We need uh, governance by the people, not by the billionaires. Mm -hmm. You know, Lanny, let's move from talking super PACs and talk about these super poll numbers for uh, Senator Sanders. You think the Clinton campaign should be worried about uh, Senator Sanders' rising poll numbers? Well, I think we respect that Senator Sanders is running a competitive race. I wrote a column in my uh, Hill column that I write each week 
in which I said I wouldn't be surprised if Bernie Sanders won both Iowa and New Hampshire. And I think when he gets into the big states and he's faced with uh, a variety of voters, uh, it'll be a competitive race. We've always said that Bernie Sanders and any other Democrat that enters the race, that this is going to be a competitive race. It's only the media that gets surprised that Hillary Clinton drops from 60 to 40 percent and that that's a drop. This has always been a competitive race from day one. No one has believed us. So the answer is, of course, we're concerned that somebody might beat Hillary Clinton in any primary. Mm -hmm. I hope that Hillary Clinton comes through in both New Hampshire and Iowa. But I, I think it's going to be a tough race all the way through to the mm -hmm. convention. And then uh, uh, Mr. Cohen and I are going to be united supporting a progressive <laughs> Democrat, a progressive Democrat who will do something about income disparity and do something about fair taxation, the things that Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders mm -hmm. stand for well, against whatever Republican is nominated. Well, Larry, let me bring up something that Lanny just talked about, and that is, I mean, he even said, Lanny just said that he wouldn't be surprised if Hillary Clinton lost Iowa and New Hampshire, but then the, the, t the competitive part will come once you leave those two states and meet up with, as Lanny said, a variety of voters. One of the criticisms of Senator Sanders and one of the concerns is that once you get into states like South Carolina that has a large African-American voting population, how does Senator Sanders connect with African-Americans enough to make himself competitive in not just South Carolina, but in a, a, a lot of those southern states where the African-American block and just people of color are more plentiful than they are in Iowa and New Hampshire. Yeah, so first of all, I don't believe anybody in the Clinton campaign, John Podesta or anybody else, expected Bernie Sanders to be up 10 points in Iowa and New Hampshire, as he is today. I think it's the message. I don't think it's just about having competition. There are two other Democrats with single numbers at best. Uh, in terms of African-American voters, I was just in South Carolina for two days, Iowa four days before that. Uh, this is a groundswell. And the kind of uh, response that Senator Sanders got at uh, Benedict uh, University, a uh, historically bl black university, uh, students, uh, whether they're black or white or Latino, embracing him everywhere. I, that's what I saw in Iowa. That's what I saw in South Carolina. Union members, mostly African-American at the state AFL-CIO, you know, wildly enthusiastic about Bernie when I spoke there. So I think we're going to see African-American leadership across the South and across the country. Jonathan, in this please, campaign. Let me, please let me Real correct quick. any inference. I did not mean to infer that Bernie Sanders isn't just as capable of attracting people of color and all sorts of diverse voters because of his progressive views and the correct ideas he has about the country. I am saying that the universe of voters expands and expands into larger mm -hmm. states. And Hillary Clinton, I still believe, will be the nominee. She got 18 million votes against one of the great candidates ever in Barack Obama. Mm -hmm. So I do not mean to infer that Bernie Sanders can appeal to the same voters. Lana, you didn't make that inference. I did in my question. Larry Cohen and Lanny Davis. Thank